the muscular system is mainly concerned with producing movement through muscle contraction. Muscles are attached to bones by a tendons. Muscles contract to move our bones by pulling on them. However, muscles can only pull, they cannot push. This is why they usually work at a joint in pairs. One muscle of the pair contracts to move the body part. The other muscle in the pair then contracts to return the body part back to the original position. Namaste friends. My name is Ritesh and I am a senior teacher at Yoga FX International Yoga Teacher Training Academy. And I am really thrilled and excited to present you a series on anatomy and physiology lectures. We really hope that you enjoy and please feel free to keep sending your emails if you have any questions and really looking forward to seeing you soon. Let's get started. Group action of muscles. Muscles work together or in opposition to achieve a wide variety of movements. Therefore, whatever one muscle can do, there is another muscle that can undo it. Muscles may also be required to provide an additional support or stability to enable certain movements to occur elsewhere. For example, when you perform a bicep curl, the bicep will be the agonist as it is contracting to produce the movement. While the tricep will be the antagonist as it is relaxing to allow the movement to occur. Muscles are classified into four functional groups. Number one, prime mover or agonist. Two, antagonist. Three, synergist. Four, stabilizer. Let us talk about prime mover or agonist. A prime mover, also called an agonist, is a muscle that contracts to produce a specific movement. An example is the bicep brachii, which is the prime mover in the elbow flexion. Other muscles may assist the prime mover in providing the same movement, but with less effect. Such muscles are called assistant movers or secondary movers. For example, the brachialis assists the bicep brachii in flexing the elbow and therefore is a secondary mover. Antagonist, the muscle on the opposite side of a joint to the prime mover and which must relax to allow the prime mover to contract is called an antagonist. For example, when the bicep brachii on the front of the arm contracts to flex the elbow, the tricep brachii on the back of the arm must relax to allow this movement to occur. When the movement is reversed, that is, when the elbow is extended against resistant, the tricep brachii becomes the prime mover and the bicep brachii assumes the role of antagonist. Synergist. Synergists are muscles that enhance the movement of agonist. They can also prevent any unwanted movements that might occur as a prime mover contracts. This is especially important when a prime mover crosses two joints because when it contracts, it will cause movement at both joints. Unless other muscle act to stabilize one of the joints, for example, the muscles that flex the fingers not only cross the finger but also cross the wrist joint, potentially causing movement at both the joints. However, because you have other muscles acting synergistically to stabilize the wrist joint, you are able to flex the fingers into a fist without flexing the wrist at the same time. A prime mover may have more than one action at the same time or another joint. So synergists also act to eliminate the unwanted movements. For example, 
the bicep brachii will flex the elbow but its line of pull will also supinate the forearm that is twisting the forearm as is like tightening a screw if we want to flex to occur without supination other muscles must contract to prevent this supination in this context such synergists are sometimes called neutralizers counterbalancing the unwanted movements stabilizers a synergist is more specifically referred to as a fixator or stabilizer when it immobilizes the bone of the prime mover origin thus providing a stable base for the action of prime mover the muscle that stabilizes or fix the scapulae during movement of the upper limb are good examples the sit up exercise is an another good example the abdominal muscles attached to the both the rib cage and the pelvis when they contract to enable you to perform a sit up the hip flexors will contract to synergistically as fixators to prevent the abdomen from tilting the pelvis thereby enabling the upper body to curl forward as the pelvis remain stationary many yoga positions are held isometrically against an immovable force such as the floor this is a form of strength training but to get there and return from a given position muscles usually contract concentrically or eccentrically to better understand these concepts consider the following analysis of a boat pose that is navasan now boat pose is mainly a hip flexion and spinal extension asan if the arms are reaching forward shoulder flexion is added the main muscles that are contracting concentrically that is shortening against resistance that is gravity to get there are the hip flexors rectus femoris sartorius and iliopsoas the hip adductors help to keep the legs together the quadricep muscles are contract to keep the knee straight if this pose is too challenging the knee can be bent and the hands can be placed on the floor if the pose is done correctly the deep posterior muscles that is your transversus spinalis etc and other strong spinal extensors that is your erector spinae will also contract to strengthen the spine against the resistance of gravity thus all the contracting muscles are the agonist the movers or the mobilizers and their antagonist are the muscles on the opposite side of the mover the hip extensors gluteus maximus and hamstrings and spinal flexors abdominals at the shoulder joint the arm flexor upper pectoralis major anterior deltoid bicep brachii and the coracobrachialis are working to hold the arms forward in flexion against gravity what are the stabilizers the psoas major is acting as a stabilizer for the hip and the lumbar spine and as a synergist with the iliacus in hip flexion other deep core muscles such as the transverse abdominis and quadratus lumborum are stabilizing the lower spine as well the question is what are the abdominals doing one can certainly feel them working in the posture the rectus abdominis and obliques are actually stabilizing acting to hold the posture support the lumbar spine now to come out of the pose the agonist especially at the hip must now contract eccentrically that is lengthening to keep the legs from slamming into the floor in other words they control the movement towards resistance or else gravity will cause the downward movement to be fast in navasan the muscles being stretched are mostly the hamstrings especially if the knees are straightened if the arms are forward the latissimus dorsi teres major and minor infraspinatus posterior deltoid and the tricep are lengthened to some extent they are muscles located posteriorly on the back that extends the shoulder joint 
the shoulder girdle is fixed neutrally. An important note, all muscles have the ability to be agonist, antagonist, synergist and stabilizers. The role of the muscle depends on the movement being performed. A muscle can be a primary mover and other muscles that can do the same movement are called synergistic where they aid the prime muscle or become secondary mover or supporter of the position. Sometimes the term neutralizer is used as well as synergist when a muscle acts to cancel out an unwanted movement by another muscle. In yoga asana, it is most important to know which muscles are strengthening, that is contracting, which muscles are being stretched, that is lengthening, and which muscles are working as stabilizers to support the pose. To sum it up with examples, the first example is of Paschimuttanasana. In a yoga pose such as Paschimuttanasana, that is seated forward bend, the quadricep muscles are the agonist because they contract and the hamstrings are the antagonist because they stretch. Similarly, when we bend our elbow, the bicep is your agonist muscle, contract and the tricep is your antagonist muscle because we are stretching to allow for the elbow to bend. For example, to extend the leg at the knee, a group of four muscles called the quadriceps femoris in the anterior compartment of the thigh are activated and would be called the agonist for leg extension at the knee. A set of antagonists called the hamstrings in the posterior compartment of the thigh are activated to slow or stop the movement. These terms are reversed for the opposite action. Flexion of the leg at the knee, in this case, the hamstrings would be called the agonist and the quadricep femoris would be called the antagonist. I will give you one more example. Let's try to understand Virabhadrasana 3. From Tadasana or from Virabhadrasana 2, when we move into Virabhadrasana 3, the agonist are the hamstrings and the gluteus muscle or the gluteal muscle. They activate to move the leg to the back into hip extension. The antagonists are the hip flexor or the muscle along the front of the hip. And they stretch as the hamstrings and gluteal contract. So just to have a recap, we covered agonist, antagonist, synergist. We really hope that you enjoyed it and please feel free to send any questions that you may have. See you soon. Take care. Keep smiling. Namaste.